Well, it's time for news abuse. We highlight the worst cases of doltish pig-headedness in the American press, and there are lots to choose from, of course. Fox News senior political analyst Britt Hume, who has been around a newsroom or two, joins us now. Britt, it's great to see you. So you too, you're hey, Tucker. I, I, every day I go out down here and I look around to see Tucker, and everybody down here is saying, "Where's Tucker?" I understand I you've been a little busy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll be back there soon. Britt and I see each other in Florida. Um, <laughs> well, so we're all looking for you. <laughs> you're from Washington. You grew up here, right in the city. You've read the Washington Post your whole life, obviously. I still read it because I still live here. This morning, you may have seen on the op-ed page, I think seven out of seven opinion pieces were anti-Trump. And I wonder, what's the point of that? I mean, it does seem kind of monochromatic after a while. I mean, I get that they don't like Trump. That's fine. But it doesn't seem that interesting to read. Why are they doing it? That's exactly right. After you read this stuff a while, it begins to get boring. And what, he's, what I think we are seeing happening here is a reaction to Trump's election that almost borders on hysteria. You know, it is almost as if these journalists who really sort of didn't get Trump and underestimated him, and a lot of us did, having seen him now get elected against all expectations, or nearly all except in his camp, have decided that uh, this can't have really happened, and they're going to mount some kind of a movement now. They're going to be part of a resistance movement to try to see if they can halt his progress and bring him down. And it does not seem to dawn on these writers that there's more to Donald Trump than, you know, than orange hair in a gilded apartment and, and outrageous tweets at 2 o'clock in the morning. That there's another side to the man, and it is embodied, I think, in these cabinet appointments he's made and other nominations that he's, that he's made and appointments that he's made, most of which I think, Tucker, are pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, but it seems like they're, they're miscast for the jobs they occupy. I mean, I've, I was a writer for a long time. I've always had strong opinions. But I never felt that I was part of a movement other than to try to figure out what was going on. But the idea that you're leading a resistance against a political figure, doesn't that automatically disqualify you from honest commentary? Well, you would think so. And I, I think what's striking about this is, you know, there's been a lot of comments in one of the articles that's uh, in the Washington Post that is by Katrina Vanden Heuvel, who either is or was the editor of The Nation. She's very yes. liberal, very prominent, uh, been around a long time. And she was writing about all the things that journalists need to do properly to cover Donald Trump. One thing that's strikingly left out of the whole article was this. Be fair. Yeah. Have you heard any journalists on the air or elsewhere talking about whatever else you have to do, investigate him and, and, and hold his, uh, his comments up to the light and see whether they match up. That's all fine. But does anybody yeah. ever say, and also be fair? I haven't heard it no. yet, and I haven't seen yeah, much no. of it, I must tell you. No, because being fair means collaborating. So uh, I was drawn to this. This is a guy named Ned Reznikoff, who's a writer over at Think Progress. Smart guy, went to NYU apparently, and he wrote this post right after the election about how he invited a plumber over to his apartment to fix a clogged sink. He says, a middle-aged white man with a southern accent who seemed unperturbed by this week's news, that is the election. And Ned Reznikoff, on the base of no evidence, convinces himself that this guy is an anti-Semite who might hurt him. He said, today was a reminder that ambiguous social interactions now feel unsafe and unpredictable in a way they never did before. Even if Trump is gone in four years, I don't expect to ever reclaim that feeling of security. That's just one more thing you voted for if you voted for him. That seems unstable to me. That seems more like a psychological condition than a political statement. Uh, it's paranoid. And what I would say yeah. about it is that as you look at it, I mean, he, this is a man who says that this guy, this plumber comes to his apartment to fix a clogged drain. The guy was perfectly nice. He had a southern yeah. accent. And the guy said he couldn't get out of his mind that he might have voted for Trump, although he didn't know whether he voted for Trump or not. And he was then afraid of him. So this is, this is not... This is not a sane reaction here, it seems no. to me, when someone, because Donald Trump got elected, you're suddenly scared of the plumber. That's, strike, that's pretty striking, Tucker, I'd have to say. And you know what? When pop stars have mental breakdowns, they plead exhaustion and go to Palm Springs for a month. They take themselves out of the game. Guys like this in journalism should do the same, I think, for their own good and ours. Well, I, I, yeah, but the first thing they have to do is recognize that there's something goofy about the way they're reacting. <laughs> and until that happens, I don't think we're going to be seeing many, uh, many sabbaticals taken to calm down, although it might be a good idea. It's a good point. Unlike Beyonce, they don't have managers. Brett Hume, joining us live from Florida. It's great to see you, Brett.